2016 has been a terrible year for us dealing with the Japanese beetle. It seems like everybody and their brother has got some of these insects flying around their property, devouring lots of their plants. This is one of these pests that when it arrives, it comes in full force. And the adult is a very devastating insect. As an adult, it can feed on over 400 different species of plants that we grow in our gardens, in our ornamental plantings, or the trees that we have on our property. As an adult, it's about a half an inch long. It's green on the front end. The head and the thorax are a bright iridescent green, and they have copper-colored elytra. And elytra are the, the top wings on the back of the beetle's abdomen. So that mixture of green and orange with some white dots along the edge of the abdomen, those are your key diagnostic characteristics to see if you're dealing with the adult Japanese beetle. It's one of our rare pests that's a double whammy. It's a pest as an adult and as an immature. The grub form, the larval form, lives in our soil and consumes the roots of turf grass, becomes a lawn pest or a park pest, as well as a golf course pest. The adult Japanese beetle, when they land on the leaves of our plants, this is where they like to feed. They, they attack the green pieces of the leaf that grow in between the veins of it. And they create this doily-like pattern that you see here. They have very sharp mandibles, so they're able to chew that from the leaf very efficiently. They also like to attack the flowers of certain plants, such as roses, where they'll shred those roses up into a fine mesh. They also like to feed on the fruits of things like grapes and peaches, where they'll pierce the, the fruit and then they'll crawl inside and kind of hollow it out. So all of this damage is extraordinarily devastating and it's really annoying to deal with as a gardener. So lots of people have been asking, what can we do about this pest so that I don't have to deal with it anymore this summer? Unfortunately, the time for proactive care of our plants has kind of passed at this point. If you really want to be proactive about Japanese beetle control, you really need to think about in April or May purchasing a systemic insecticide that you'll apply around the roots of your larger trees. So you can get things like ortho tree and shrub or Bayer tree and shrub. These are neonicotinoid products that the plant will absorb and they'll protect the leaves of things like lindens, birches, and elms into the summer when the Japanese beetle actually emerges in June and July. In terms of right now what we can be doing, we can talk about using things like bifenthrin or cyfluthrin or even carbaryl on the leaves of plants. Always read the labels of these insecticides. Make sure you don't apply them to flowers. All of these different insecticides can have some really negative impacts on our pollinator friends. So only treat the leaves of smaller trees and shrubs. Don't treat your rose flowers with those products. If you're interested in more organic or botanical type solutions, products like neem or pyola are also really effective against the Japanese beetle. They last for about four to six days. You can apply them to the leaves. You'll have to reapply a few times over that two month flight period. But if you do this in a regular fashion, you'll make sure that those beetles don't eat up your entire plant. For your trees, the damage that you see is merely cosmetic for the most part, and they will grow back through it, and it's not gonna kill those plants.